Hi, this is Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at InterArbor Solutions, and you're listening to Briefings Direct. Businesses, schools, and governments have all had to rethink the proper balance between in-person and remote work. And because that balance is a shifting variable and may well continue to be for years after the pandemic, it remains essential that the underlying technology be especially agile. Stay with us now as we explore how a partnership behind a digital workplace services solution delivers a sliding scale of sorts for blended work scenarios. We'll learn how Unisys, Dell, and their partners provide the time-proof means to secure applications intelligently, regardless of location. We'll also hear how an increasingly powerful automation capability makes the digital workplace easier to attain and support. To learn more about the latest in cloud-delivered desktop modernization, please join me now in welcoming our guests. We're here with Weston Morris, Global Strategy Digital Workplace Services, Enterprise Services at Unisys. Welcome, Weston. It's great to be here, Dana. I look forward to the conversation. We're also here with Araceli Lewis, Global Alliance Lead for Unisys at Dell Technologies. Welcome, Araceli. Thank you, Dana. I'm so excited to be here with you all. Weston, let me start with you. What are your many experiences these days are the trends, catalysts, and especially the requirements transforming how desktops and apps are delivered. I think we've all lived through the hype of VDI. Every year for the last uh, eight or nine years has been supposed to be the year of VDI. This is the year it's going to happen. And it's kind of been a, a slow burn. It's been certainly an important part of the bag of tricks that IT will bring to bear to provide workers, what they need to be productive. But I I tell you, really, Dana, since the beginning of this year, I think we're all seeing because of the pandemic, it really brought to the forefront the importance of having an alternative way of delivering a digital workplace to to workers. We're seeing, especially in environments or in enterprises and industries that had not invested in, let's say, mobility, uh, had not invested in taking advantage of the cloud, had not thought about making it possible for user data to reside outside of their desktop, those enterprises had a very difficult time moving into a work-from-home model, and and they struggled with that. I mean, their first instinct was, oh, I need to buy a bunch of laptops. Well, everybody wanted laptops at the beginning of the pandemic. And secondly, they're being made in China, mostly, and and those factories were shut down. It was impossible to, to buy a laptop if you hadn't had the foresight to do that ahead of time. And that's when the aha moment for a lot of enterprises uh, appeared, saying, hey, Cloud-based virtual desktops, that sounds like the answer. That's the, that's the solution. And it really is. Being able to set that up very quickly, spin up a essentially the digital workplace in the cloud, having your apps streamed down, having your app, your, your data securely secured in the cloud as well, and then delivered to the end users. And that's, uh, I will say, is really one of the big aha moments that we've had as we look at our customer base and we look at the enterprises across, across the world even, and even our own internal use, uh, the importance of that. So, Araceli, it sounds like for some types of verticals and s- certain organizations, they may have waited a little bit to get into the VDI mindset. But then when the pandemic hit, they had to move quickly. What is it about the digital workplace services solution that you all are factoring together that helps make this something that you can do quickly? That is absolutely true. The pandemic did elevate digital workplace technology from nice to have and a luxury to an absolute must have. Post-pandemic, we realized that in public sector, education, and just in our everyday work, that the digitalization of these physical objects to deliver new and secure ways of working remotely had to become instantaneously available for everyone. So you had every C-level executive across every industry in the United States shifting to that model within two weeks to 30 days. And it was done globally. So who better than Dell on laptops? and end user compute, as we know it, partnering with Unisys globally to secure delivery of these digital workspaces post-pandemic to our joint customers. Unisys provides the security, the capabilities, and wraps the services around it, whereas we have the end user devices. And what we've seen is that the digitalization of it all is going to be done at the comfort of everyone's own home, regardless of a doctor looking at x-rays, a nurse looking into someone's throat, somebody actually trying to troubleshoot something that might be across the world, with augmented reality, VR, and wearables. Contact tracing come into play. So how do we merge and blend all of those technologies in these different environments with best-of-breed alliances partners to deliver the needs of what all of these C-levels are wanting immediately now? 
Right. And Weston, it seems like the pandemic has been an accelerant, but at least many people that I speak to have anticipated that these sorts of virtual delivery of desktop and apps was, was inevitable anyway. But when you do do it, it seems to me that it also gets some other benefits that are that are timely. For example, work habits. So millennials as a group seem to have a, a work preference for location independence and mergers and acquisitions and changing dynamic business environments. So what are some of the other drivers that will reward people when they make the leap to a fully virtual delivery of, of their apps and desktops? Yeah, I, I'm thinking back to a conversation I had with you, Araceli, I think it was back in March, and your excitement and energy around the topic of business continuity, which obviously was started with the pandemic. You know, Dana, we, we all admit that. But recognizing that there are several other forces at work, like you're describing here, that preceded the pandemic, and we know will continue to continue after the pandemic. And mergers and acquisitions is a very big one. We see that a tremendous amount of activity there in the healthcare space, which was affected in multiple ways by the pandemic. Pharmaceuticals and life sciences as well, multiple M&A activities going on. And one of the big challenges in a merger and an acquisition is how do I quickly get the acquired employees working as first-class citizens as quickly as possible? And that, that's always been difficult, right? You either give them two laptops, two desktops, and say, here's how, here's how you do the work in the new company, and here's where you do the work in the old company. Or you just pull the plug and you say, now you have to figure out how to do everything new, HR, web time, all of those procedures in, in your new environment. And, and hopefully, you know, you figure it all out. But with cloud-based virtual desktop capability, especially with cloud bursting, you can quickly spin up as much capacity as you need and build upon the on-prem capability that you already have, such as on Dell VxRail, exploding into the, the cloud as needed using Horizon on Azure as an example, and provide a virtual desktop for all these acquired employees for them to do their new corporate citizen stuff, <laughs> HR, web time, that kind of stuff, while they keep their existing environment and continue product, productive doing, you know, doing the job that you hired them to do when you made the acquisition. That's a very big example that I think we're going to continue to see going forward. Now, there were a number of hurdles historically towards everyone adopting VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure. But one of the major use cases was, of course, security and being able to control content by having it centrally located on your servers or in your cloud rather than out on every device. Is that still a driving consideration, uh, Weston? Do people look to this now for that security or has that become sort of a passe? Security has become even more important, you know, through the pandemic. In the past, at least to a large extent, the, the corporate firewall, this the secure the perimeter model has worked fairly well. We've been punching holes in the firewall for, for several years now, but the pandemic with having everybody and almost everybody in a corporation working from home, your office, your network offer is just exploded, right? It is everywhere. Now you have to worry about, well, how well secured is that person's home network? Do they have their password? change their default password changed on their home router? Have they updated the firmware on it? And a lot of these things are beyond the average worker to, to even worry about and to be thinking about. So if we were to separate the workload and, and put it into the cloud so that you have this digital workplace sitting in the cloud, that is much more secure than it is thinking about a, a device that is sitting on somebody's desk, connecting into a, a very questionable home work environment. Right now, uh, among the other challenges that people have faced in working towards a more modern desktop delivery has been cost, because it's usually was capital intensive and required investment. But when you do it via the cloud, that can shift. So, Araceli, what are some of the challenges that we're now perhaps able to overcome when it comes to the economics of virtual desktop delivery? Yes, Dana. You know, the beautiful thing here is that with our partnership with Unisys and Dell Financial Services, we're able to utilize different utility models when it comes to how we consume the technology. We don't have to have that upfront capital expenditure right up front. We basically can look at different ways that we can do infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. So we can consume the technology in the most efficient manner that actually works with the book and how we're going to depreciate it. So that's extremely flexible. And when we do that partnered with Unisys, then basically Unisys can secure those VDI solutions because they're consisting of three core components the VDI portion of the solution that's in the data center, the endpoint devices, and of course, the software. So partnering with Unisys in our, in our alliances ecosystem, we actually get the best of Dell Financial Services, Dell Technologies, VMware, and Unisys security and capabilities to deliver those out to the market. 
All right, Weston, before we move on to understanding the actual partnership and solution that you all have put together, it seems to me that another issue um, had to do with, with complexity particularly for the IT department, right? So when we think about VDI, we can't just think about the end user. Uh, What has changed about how the IT department needs to employ infrastructure to do this? And why is a hybrid approach still a strong bet? And and, and how how do we think about this delivered both from your own data center as well as a cloud? Yeah, Rosalie, I've had uh, several conversations about this. This is a, an interesting topic. It's always been, you brought up earlier, one of the you know the questions you asked is, what is the barrier to VDI? One of them has been, it's a lot of work to stand it up. I mean, you, you know, if you're starting from scratch, you're thinking about storage and IOPS and the network capacity and where are my apps and what's the connectivity and is it, it, is it really running at, at the optimal performance? And after all that, are my end users happy with the experience they're getting? And how can I even know that, you know, what their experience is? And all that's changed. Uh, so there's a couple of things that uh, we'll talk about a bit more when we get into the technology, but maybe just to describe them in terms of the, the in general cases. One of them is the ad- advent of AI and personal intelligent virtual assistants. We at home, we're used to that, right? We ask Alexa or Siri or whatever, or Cortana, what's going on with the weather? What's happening in the news? What about travel plans? I guess in some point in the future, we might still be talking about travel plans. But we we ask our virtual assistant all of these things, and we expect to be able to get instant answers and help for that. Why is that not available in the enterprise? Well, the answer is, it is now available. And so you can imagine on the provisioning side, wouldn't it be great if you were able to talk to a virtual assistant that understood the provisioning process and simply asked you the questions, what is it you need to provision here? What is your load that you're looking at? Do you have engineers that need to access virtual desktops? What are the type of apps they might need? What is the type of security? And then the virtual assistant understands the business process and the IT processes to provision the infrastructure that's needed virtually in the cloud to make that happen or cloud burst from your on-prem Dell VxRail into the cloud. So that is that is a, a, a really a, a very important game changer. The other aspect of the intelligent virtual agent is it now residing, being able to reside on the virtual desktop as well. So now I've got a home worker who may have never seen a virtual desktop before. And now this virtual assistant pops up and can guide that, that home worker through the process of connecting, explaining how their apps work and saying, I'm always here. I'm ready to give you help whenever possible. But, but I think I'll, I'll defer to the expert here, Araceli. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the, the power of the hybrid environment and how that simplifies the infrastructure? Sure, absolutely. Well, at Dell EMC, we really are proud of the fact that Gartner has us in a leader, number one Gartner category for pretty much all of the products that we're including in this VDI solution. So when Unisys and the Alliance, My Alliance's team get the technology, it's already been tested from a hyper-converged perspective. VxRail has already been tested, tried, and true as an automated system that we actually combine servers, storage, network, and the software. So that way, Weston and I don't have to worry about what size we're going to use. We actually have t-shirt sizes already for the number of VDI users that are needed that have been thought out. We have the graphics-intensive portion of it thought out, and we can basically deploy quickly in these t-shirt sizes in the Unisys data centers and then put the workloads on them. As we need to spin them up or spin them down or add more, we can adjust on the fly. So I think that it's a true testament of our hyper-converged infrastructure being the backbone of the solution. And we don't have to get into all of the testing, regression testing, and the automation and self-healing of it. Because a lot of that management that would have to be done by an enterprise or by a managed services provider is done via the lifecycle management of the X-Rail. So that is a huge benefit for the fact that we deliver a solution from the value line and the hypervisor on up, and we can really focus on the end user services and needs, and we don't have to be swapping out parts, components, cables, or troubleshooting because of all of the R&D that Dell's done in that technology today. If I could just add to that, Araceli, the first time you and your team showed me the cloud bursting capability, it just blew me away. I mean, I I know in the past how hard it is to expand any infrastructure, right? And so you showed me where every, you know every industry is going to every enterprise is going to have a core base of of consumption. So why not put that on the LBX rail? And then as you need to expand, a cloud burst into in this case Horizon running on Azure. And that can all be done now through a single dashboard. I don't have to be thinking, okay, now I've got to have this separate workload. It's in the cloud. This other workload that's in my on-prem cloud (laughs) with VxRail, it's all done 
through one single dashboard. And then that can be automated on the back end to through our virtual agent, which is pretty cool. Well, it sure seems in hindsight that the timing here was auspicious, just as the virus was forcing people to find a virtual desktop solution. You all had put together the intelligence and the automation through a software-defined infrastructure like hyper-converged infrastructure, the ability to go hybrid by bursting to the cloud. And so it seems that the way that you get to a solution like this has never been easier just when it was needed to be easy, which means it can go to places like small to medium-sized businesses, like public sector and, and education. So was that, in fact, the case, Weston, that we sort of had a positive confluence of timing around this solution? <laughs> yeah, the the perfect storm analogy certainly definitely applied. I mean, it was great when I, I got the phone call from, from Araceli says, hey, we've got this business continuity capability. We had been thinking about business continuity as well. We looked at the different components that we, we, we each brought, Unisys with its security around stealth, our ability to proactively monitor infrastructure and, and desktops and see what's going on and, res- and automatically fix them, our IntelliServe platform for the intelligent virtual agent and automation, and realizing that this was, this was really a great solution, a much better solution than the individual parts. We could not make this happen without all of the cool stuff that Dell is bringing in terms of the HCI, the hyperconverged infrastructure, the, the thin clients, and of course, the, the very powerful VMware-based virtual desktops. And we added to that some things that we've, be, we've become very good at in our digital workplace uh, transformation. And the result, I think, is something that can make a real difference for enterprises. And, and then you mentioned public sector and education as well. Those are, I think, great examples of, of enterprises or industries that, that really can benefit from this. Araceli, anything more to offer on how your solution came together, the partners and the constituent parts? Maybe it'd be worthwhile just sort of laying out what the constituent parts are. I just think that consistent infrastructure, consistent operations, and the help of our partner, Unisys, globally to deliver the services needed for the end users was just a partnership that had to come together. We at Dell couldn't do it alone. We needed the data center space. We needed the capabilities of their architects and teams to deliver for us. So I think as we thought it through, and we were getting so many requests during the pandemic, overwhelming amount of demand from every C-level suite across the country in every vertical and every industry. We really had to rely and lean on on Unisys as our trusted partner, not only in the public sector and the flood space, healthcare and banking, but we knew that if we partnered with them, we could truly give our communities what they needed to help get us through this pandemic. And and among those constituent parts is an important part is uh, Dell Horizon. Explain a little bit why that's important and how that works, if you would. Absolutely, Dana. VMware Horizon is the glue. It streamlines desktop and app delivery in various ways. The first would be by cloud bursting. It actually gives us the capability to do that in a very simplistic fashion. Secondly, it's a single pane of glass. It'll actually deliver all of the business critical apps to any device anywhere on a single screen. So that makes it simple and comprehensive for our IT staff. We can also deliver non-persistent virtual desktops. Advantage here is that it really makes software patching and distribution a whole lot easier. We don't have all of the complexity. If there were ever a security concern or an issue, we could just simply blow away that non-persistent virtual desktop and start all over. It'll get us to our first base, square one, and we wouldn't have to spend countless hours of backups and restores to get us to where we are today. So it pulls everything together for us, and the end users have a seamless interface. IT staff doesn't have the complexity, and it gives us the best of all worlds while we get out to the cloud. Weston, let's double down a little bit more on the intelligent agents and bots, maybe through an example. If you could describe how it works in practice, it's really fascinating to me that you're using these AI-enabled robotic process collaboration tools to help the IT department set this up and put it in place, but you're also using it to help the end user learn how to um, onboard themselves, get going, and then get ongoing support. It's an investment we started with well over a year ago, 18, almost 24 months ago, branded as the IntelliServe platform, which initially was intended to bring artificial intelligence, automation, and analytics to the service desk, to improve the service desk experience, uh, to make it easy to use, to make it scalable, and to, to just make it learn over time what kind of problems people are having and help solve those problems. But we realized once we had it in place, we said, wow, this this really this intelligent virtual agent can almost be an enterprise personal assistant where it can be trained on anything, any business process. So we've been training it on fixing 
common IT problems, password reset, I can't log in, can't get to the VPN, Outlook crash, those types of things. And it does very well at that sort of activity. But the core technology is perfectly suited to be trained for, I'll say, IT processes or even business processes inside of an enterprise or a public sector or education environment. As an example, for very particularly for the, this scenario here for virtual desktop, if a customer has a specific process for provisioning virtual desktops, they may have specific pools, we'll say, of types of virtual desktops, certain capacities, and those can be created ahead of time, ready to go. And then it's just a matter of communicating with this intelligent virtual assistant to say, I need to add more users to this pool, or we need to remove users, or we may even have a request to add a whole new pool. And I say she, it's Amelia, it's branded as Amelia, it has a female voice, though it doesn't have to be, in most, most cases it is. When we speak with Amelia, she's able to ask questions that guide me through the process. I don't have to know exactly what the process is because I don't do this very often, but she can be trained to be an expert on it. Collect the information that's needed, submit that off to the underlying robotic process automation that communicates with the Horizon and Azure and VxRail platform to provision the virtual desktops as needed. And this can happen very quickly, whereas in the past, it may have taken days or maybe weeks to spin up an, a new environment for a new project or for a merger and acquisition, or in this case, reacting to the pandemic and getting people to work from home. By the same token, when the end users open up their virtual desktops and they connect to their Horizon workspace, there is Amelia. She's there ready to respond to a totally different type of question. How do I use this? Where's my apps? This is new to me. What do I do? How do I connect? What about uh, working from home? What's my VPN connection working like? And, and how do I get that connected properly? What about security issues? There, she's now able to help with the standard end user type issues as well. Araceli, anything to offer in terms of examples of where this intelligence process automation has played out in the, in, the, in the workplace or even in the public sector? Do we have some ways of measuring the impact? We do, Dana, and thanks for that. It's really given us, in certain use cases, the predictability and the benefit of pay-as-you-grow and linear at scale, pay-by-the-seat type of a solution. In the past, if we had a state or a government agency, for instance, without naming them specifically, where they had, let's say, 10,000 seats that they needed, and we measured it by seat. If you hit a situation where it was a pandemic or if it was any other type of environment that we had to quickly adjust to, how is it that we could deliver from 10,000, maybe three times, five times that infrastructure? There wasn't in the past. So I think that now by getting these Dell EMC ready architectures with the technologies that we've discussed before and with Unisys capabilities, we can actually provide a pay-as-you-grow in linear scale. We can show these state agencies that, yes, the public sector financial firms that you started here, and we can actually predict where that pricing is going to be as they need to use it. In the past, there was a lot of CapEx, as we talked about. There's a lot of process, a lot of change, and there just were too many unknowns. So these platforms now have simplified the management of the back end, the software, and the delivery of it. So it creates a true platform that we can actually quantify and measure, not only just financially, but from a time to delivery. I could maybe just add to that with a maybe an example of one particular customer, Araceli, that I think you're familiar with, where when they had a manual process for onboarding, and onboarding includes multiple steps, one of which is give me my digital workplace, but there's other things too, the training, give me access to my email and all that. That was taking almost 40 hours. Yeah, so you can imagine a person starting their, their job, 40 hours later, almost a week, they finally get the stuff they need to be productive. That is a lot of downtime that I think any enterprise can figure out what that's going to cost them. After automation, that was down to a little over eight hours. What that means is a person maybe starts, they're filling out their paperwork still with HR on day one, getting oriented. The next day, they have everything they need to be productive. What a big difference. And the offboarding is, is probably maybe even more interesting. We focus on getting people productive, but what happens when a person leaves the company, maybe under, under unfavorable circumstances, we might say. In the past, the manual processes for this particular customer, it was taking almost 24 hours before everything got turned off. What does that mean? That means that an unhappy, disgruntled employee has 24 hours. They can come back in, download content, get access to materials, or perhaps be disruptive or even destructive with, with the corporate 
intellectual property, which is very bad. Through automation, this process now is down to six minutes. I mean, that person hasn't even got up out of their desk yet and walked out of the room, and they've been locked out from completely from the entire entirely from the that environment. And that can be, even be done more quickly if we're talking about a virtual desktop environment, which can the switch can be thrown immediately and completely access is completely removed from that environment. And Araceli, Araceli, rather, you mentioned Horizon and how you can use that to support a number of, of endpoints. But I'm wondering, is there sort of a, a best of breed or thin client hardware approach that you're using? And what about those high intense use cases such as graphics or CAD CAM, where you need to have a lot of visual capabilities. What's the the endpoint approach and how well can you support some of these more intense applications? Well, being Dell Technologies was the, the perfect question for us, Dana, because we can understand the persona of the end user. So as we roll out this technology, and let's say it was an engineering team, and we actually have a live example that my team just worked on a couple of months ago where we did CAD drawings for an engineering group. And so if you look at the personas, and we actually can, can partner with Unisys and look at what each end user needs, yes, if, if they need more memory, more processing power, if they need more graphics intensive type of end user device, we can do that. We have our wise end clients that we could use, whether it's the 3000 and the 5000. But I don't necessarily want to pinpoint one specific type of device per user because we could be talking about a doctor or we could be talking about a, a nurse on an ICU floor. She's going to need something that's more mobile. We can do things that are end user devices that are more ruggedized, maybe in an oil field or in a construction site. So from an engineering perspective, we can adopt the end user device right to their persona and their needs, and we can flexibly meet those requirements without a problem. Weston, anything from your vantage point on the diversity and agility of those endpoint devices and why this solution is uh, so versatile? There's diversity at both ends. Aricella, you talked about being able to, on the back end, provision and scale up and down the capacity and capability of a virtual desktop to meet a persona's needs. And then on the end user side, and you mentioned, Dana, millennials earlier who may not necessarily may, may want to have a choice of how they connect. Am I connecting in through my own personal laptop at home? Do I want to have access to a thin client You know, when I go back to work? Do I want to come in through a mobile? And maybe I want to do all three in the same day. <laughs> and, and I don't want to lose work in between. That is entirely possible with this infrastructure. All right. Well, we're about out of time. Uh, I'd like to take an opportunity to look to the future, though. We've been talking about what's possible now, but it seems to me that we focused on the very definition of agility. It scales, it's fast, it's automated, it's applicable across the globe. What comes next? What can you do with this technology now that you put it in place, maybe to uh, deal with the pandemic and then recognize the many other value ads along the way. But it seems to me that we're also putting in place an opportunity to do even more. So let's start with you, Weston, and then go to Araceli. What's what's coming next? We're not backing down from AI and automation. That is here to stay and is going to continue to expand. And I think also people have, have finally realized the power of cloud-based VDI, that it is a very important tool to, for IT to have in their bag of tricks to be able to respond to very specific use cases in a very fast, scalable, effective way. I think what we can expect to see in the future is AI will continue to be able to provide guidance, not only in the provisioning, as we've talked about, not only in the startup and use on the end user side, but providing analytics as to how the entire ecosystem is working, not just the virtual desktop, but the apps that are in the cloud, the identity. There's a whole security component that AI is going to play a role in. And that will just, it almost sounds like a, a you know a pipe dream that's just going to make life better. But AI absolutely will do that when it's used appropriately. Araceli? I'm actually looking into the future as to how we are going to live and work in the next five to 10 years. It's going to be tough to go back to what we were used to. Hmm. And I'm thinking forward as to IoT. Internet of Things is going to be an explosion on edge devices, on wearables, and how we incorporate all of those technologies that will be a part of a person because we now are going to be carrying our work everywhere we go. So how are we going to integrate all of the wearables, whether they're health trackers, contact tracers, whether they're wearables for speakers or audio devices, and things that are going to, going to make voice recognition more adaptable, virtual reality, AI, robotics, drones, how are we going to tie all of that? 
nowadays we tie our home systems and our and our cooling and heating and, and, and all of the things around us to interoperate. So I think it's just going to go ahead and continue to grow exponentially. And I'm really excited that I'm partnered with Unisys because I wouldn't want to do something like this without a partner that's just so deeply entrenched in security. Last question. What advice would you give to an organization that maybe hasn't bitten off the uh, virtual desktop from the cloud, from a, a hybrid environment yet? What's the best way to get started? What do you need to think about as you're pursuing perhaps scaling this out? Let's uh, first go with you, Weston. I think it's really important to, and I'm going to steal from Araceli here, what she, what you said earlier, Araceli, that it's important to understand your users, your personas. What are they consuming? How do they want to consume it? What is their connectivity like? You need to understand that if you're going to make sure you're going to deliver the right digital workplace to them and, and give them an experience that matters. Araceli, advice to those uh, starting out? Well, here at Dell Technologies, we know how important it is to retain our top talent and our best talent. And because we've been one of the top places to work for over the past few years, it's extremely important to make sure that technology and access to technology helps enable our workforce. So I truly feel that any one of our customers or end users that hasn't looked at it and hasn't realized not only the benefits, the cost savings, but in order to keep a competitive advantage in this fast-paced world, that in order to retain their talent and to give their employees the best tools and the best capabilities to be the very best, they have to look at BDI in some way, shape, or form. I think that as soon as we do bring it up to them, whether it's technically, financially, or just from a reactive and staying in business type of approach, competitive factors, it really makes sense. So it's not a tough sell at all, Dana. Well, great. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. You've been listening to a sponsored briefings direct discussion on how a partnership behind a virtual digital workplace solution delivers a sliding scale of sorts of blended work scenarios. And we've learned how this joint solution between Unisys, Dell, and their partners powerfully leverages intelligent automation to deliver securely desktop environments and applications regardless of location. So please join me in thanking our guests. We've been here with Weston Morris, Global Strategy, Digital Workplace Services, Enterprise Services at Unisys. Thanks so much, Weston. Thanks for the invitation. Appreciate the conversation. You bet. And also a big thank you to Araceli Lewis, Global Alliance Lead for Unisys at Dell Technologies. Thank you so much, Araceli. Thank you, Dana and Weston. It's an absolute pleasure. And a big thank you as well to our audience for joining this Briefings Direct Digital Workplace Innovation Discussion. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inter Arbor Solutions, your host throughout this series of Unisys and Dell Sponsored Briefings Direct Discussions. Thanks again for listening. Please pass this along to your IT community and do come back next time.